No, you can't send your children to therapy because then they might become woke. What you're supposed to do is send them to Mormon therapy, which is also bad. A lot of these churches also have their own special therapist, and you don't want that shit either. I'm saying it. All right, let's getting back. Get back to uh, the YouTuber Ruby Frank is charged with six counts of aggravated child abuse. YouTuber parents should not be allowed to do that. Let's talk about this YouTuber. This morning, a Utah mother known to millions for her very strict online parenting advice is now accused of aggravated child abuse. Ruby Frankie is her name. Her YouTube videos became controversial for her take on tough love. She is due in court this morning after authorities say two of her own children, she has six, were found to be abused and malnourished. Nancy Chen is here with more on the very disturbing allegations. Nancy, this is very troubling. Good morning to you. Yeah, disturbing indeed, Gail. Ruby Frankie rose to social media fame in 2015 with her YouTube channel, Eight Passengers, which featured her husband and their six kids. At the height of her popularity, 2.6 million people subscribed to her videos, which were all taken down after her arrest. Welcome back to Connections. I am Ruby Frankie. Online, Ruby Frankie promoted herself as a parenting expert with a straight, no-nonsense approach. Up until... Wait, what are the... Uh, acting out behaviors, sneaking up, sneaking of clothes? What does that mean? Taking the car, stealing money, taking electronics without permission, abusive action towards sibling? Self ...as a parenting expert with a straight, no-nonsense approach. Up until now, I was really hoping that, like, keeping them home from school and wiping the floorboards would like really bring pain. But now she's accused of going too far. The 41 year old mother of six was arrested last- What do you mean now she's accused? It seems like back then she was going too far. What she's describing in that situation is going too far. You can't in the media be like, here's some normal parenting advice she gave. And then she's like, I wanna punish my children by making them feel fucking dog shit. Last week, police say her 12-year-old son climbed out of the window of her business partner, Jody Hildebrandt's home, and ran to a nearby house asking for food and water. The neighbor called 911. I think he's been, he's been detained. He's been, he's obviously covered in wounds. Bro, this is literally the average schools are gendering our children parent, by the way. You know what I mean? This is like the typical fucking, this is what I assume when I hear a motherfucker who's like, I don't want no goddamn government agent teaching my child in schools. What the fuck? Letting them call themselves whatever the hell they want to. Get the fuck out of here. It's like, I need to do homeschooling. It's like, oh, okay, got it. Authorities say the juvenile appeared to be emaciated and malnourished with open wounds and duct tape around the extremities. When police searched Hildebrand's home, they say they also found Frankie's 10-year-old daughter in a similar physical condition of malnourishment. Hildebrand was also taken into custody. I love anger only when it's used in truth. The two what? women now charged with felony child abuse often created controversial videos offering parenting and relationship advice for Hildebrand's life coaching company, Connections Classroom. Being a parent is a position of power. In fact, some followers first raised concerns three years ago with an online petition calling for an investigation into Frankie. I told the kids, I said, I'm not even going to let you eat breakfast until you get your chores done. I think they've opened themselves up, not just to criticism, but again, potentially to more legal problems. CBS News legal analyst Jessica Levinson. What does it say that these charges are felony charges? The fact that these are charges related to felonies, not misdemeanors, goes to the idea that we're talking about serious physical harm to the children. Bro, this is literally like, this is like Andrew Tate shit. You know what I mean? Like she had a Hustlers University scheme for child abuse, which she inevitably is going to go to jail for in the identical fashion that like Andrew Tate at an online course teaching people how to do sex trafficking. Why do people think this is allowed? Like, I don't get it. I don't understand. People are just like, hey man, it's called traditional values. It's like, no, it's not. You're going to fucking traditional ass jail, dude. The fuck? It's so shocking. The disturbing truth of family channels, the eight passenger saga. Yeah, job well, recovered this in 2020, specifically this family. Here, let's take a look at what's going on here. Uh, 
If this is the family, right? Let's watch this. I've been meaning to watch this. Jabri in my head cannon is responsible for this investigation for the record. He didn't eat anything. He was sleeping on the floor in the family room. Jabri literally did this, dude. Okay, the one criticism that I have for Jabri is that, like, I know he scores his own videos. It's like, it doesn't have to go so hard. You know what I mean? I don't want to be finding myself bopping along when you're, like, covering mass child abuse you know what i mean i'm just like uh yeah that shit goes hard it goes too hard jobbery why does it go so hard man you can't be doing banger ass intros when you're like here's some fucking information about child abuse dude i don't want to be fucking bobbing my head along thinking about child abuse what the fuck anyway let's continue uh going hard dude all right do you know what time it is? YouTube is the number one most visited website on the internet, making it one of the easiest and most accessible avenues for anyone looking to monetize their art. For some, that art comes in the form of animations, while for others it could be something along the lines of movie or music reviews, with some genres being more demanding than others. Vlogging, for example, involves sacrificing your privacy in exchange for a certain level of authenticity. Documenting both the highs and the lows of your day-to-day -day life can lend itself to a more genuine experience from the viewer's perspective, regardless of how exaggerated certain events may be. To me, the typical vlog is just content for people to live through, but it's this personal connection mixed with a stream of highly edited and entertaining videos that makes for a winning combination on YouTube. With many of these channels racking up an unprecedented amount of dedicated viewers regularly. But what happens when you bring children into the mix? And at what point does this steady stream of family-friendly content suddenly drift into exploitation? How much can truly go wrong when every minute detail of your life is presented to an audience of millions? I'd say this is a pretty important question, at least in the case of a woman named Ruby Frank. Whenever we start sharing the the details of how we actually parent, we get we get a lot of upset. Ruby and Kevin Frank are the owners of a popular family vlog channel known as Eight Passengers, where they upload around three videos a week documenting their lives for a dedicated fan base of over. Oh, dude, that. That's the typical white guy with that haircut. Uh-oh. I've told you this before. For for white dudes, it's like, if you go bald like that, it's it could be... It's real hard. You gotta dress it up a little bit so you don't look like... So you don't fucking look like you're, you know, a white supremacist. Uh, did I have to say it? Yes, I guess. For 2 million people, garnering well over 1 billion total views since their launch in 2015. With her husband preoccupied as an assistant professor at BYU, Ruby ultimately runs the show, along with her four sisters who also maintain channels of their own, all falling under the same common theme of family vlogging. If you cut one more thing in my house, <laughs> I'm going to take the scissors, look at me, and I'm going to cut its head off. Come on, so I want to tell you something and I want you to really listen. We should have been in that crash. Put them in your pocket so you can what? take them down to the hamper and drop and give me 10. What? Put your hands straight out. They're in. They're not supposed to be out. Shape your hands forward. There you go. One. Two, down further, bring your butt down. Through her years of lifestyle mommy vlog entertainment, Ruby has accumulated a net of almost 500,000 Instagram followers and a rough estimate of $2.5 million. Though it's hard to imagine Ruby's enormous success without the help of her six children, all of which I will be censoring for the sake of respecting their own privacy. With two boys and four girls, the ages of these children range from 17 all the way down to six years old. In fact, the very first video on the Eight Passengers channel was the gender a reveal of that very six-year-old, meaning this fast-paced YouTube vlogger lifestyle is all this six-year-old girl knows. Her life has been subjected to the- Dude, that shit sucks so bad, dude. Like, you're just born into the fucking wrong family, and you just get straight up abused non-fucking-stop from day one with cameras documenting every step of it. It's so fucking awful cruel lens of a video camera since she was literally in the womb. But hey, I'm sure that'll have no greater impact on her development whatsoever. I mean, how would you feel if the most critical years of your growth had been exploited for the sole purpose of granting- Like, to be fair though, I mean, 
this family probably was going to be abusive anyway. It's like, at least they're fucking filming it. You know what I mean? And therefore, uh, in this situation, like justice was served. You know what I mean? At least because it's on camera. In a weird way, it's like a, it's like an odd silver lining. You know what I mean? Even though, because think about it this way. How many fucking Mormon families don't document it for YouTube and get away with it? Like someone who's subscribed to the top of the hour gets away with not seeing ads. Because at the top of the hour, there's a three minute ad break. And if you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime by connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account where you get one free Prime subscription a month, you know? Just saying, you can get away with not seeing ads at the top of the hour. Here's the three minute ad break now. That was one of my more diabolical segues, okay? Uh, the worst part is this isn't the only time this has happened. Another channel, Daddy05, did the same shit, and even the coverages I watched were incredibly hard to watch because they would brutally scream at their children and say it's a prank unironically. Yeah your parents monetary success and online prevalence in terms of the eight passengers channel the controversy surrounding this lovely couple runs a little deeper than what you may see on the surface at first glance they may seem like your typical run-of-the-mill family simply trying to share their joyous journey with the rest of the world plus a few overly clickbaity thumbnails but from what i and many others have observed as of late there seems to be something far more sinister happening here was thinking about you, Julie. Mm. Can I have a conversation with you? Not the talk, not right here. Okay. No, it's not. No, no, uh, no. I'm not doing this, not doing this. Okay, so here, just come sit by me. I mean, you can agree or disagree with the way a parent goes about discussing puberty with their kids. I mean, I just learned everything through the internet, which definitely didn't stunt my development at all. But I think most people would agree that filming such an awkward moment and uploading it to a family-friendly channel seemingly against your own child's will is a little unnecessary. Um, can you not film it? Um, so I just watched... <laughs> you just got rejected. Of course there's no way they cannot not film it. If they did not film it, how are they supposed to make money and pay for your schooling, kid? Kids nowadays have it way too easy. Back in her day, they actually had this outdated thing called privacy. I mean, right in the same video. These kids are pleading with Ruby not to have this talk on camera. Forget the conversation itself. The fact that it's having to be broadcast to countless strangers on the internet is embarrassing enough in itself. Imagine having to show your face at school, knowing there are kids in your class who have seen you have such a personal talk with your parents. Any kid that age would be humiliated. What about the time Ruby uploaded her 11-year-old daughter's first shave? Or her other daughter's first shave? Or her son's first shave? Julie has been asking all summer if she can shave her legs and armpits. I think every girl has a story where they're in a rush, it will cut. So there's a lot of hair in there. There's like a weird aspect of pedophilia on this too, I feel like, because then they make like, then they make like channels for the children, right? And then the children have a fuck ton of followers and you're like, some of those followers, a lot of those followers are not children, okay? Those are whole ass adults following those young ass girls, you know what I mean? It's like a very strange uh, and awful thing. Who is this, if not for pedos? I'm sure there's plenty of like Mormon families or whatever that want like a good wholesome Christian to teach them about how to properly do child abuse and mask it as like proper guidelines. And then there's like another group of people. Sometimes it's a Venn diagram that, uh, you know, has, has both in the middle. But in other instances, it's like, uh, it, it's, it's a bit column A, bit column B, sometimes A and B together. You know what I mean? They're actually. <laughs> Don't it's just very bizarre to me. Quite frankly, it's these types of videos that attract not only children, but pedophiles. Creepy old men have a history of putting timestamps in the comments where kids are in compromising positions. And to me, such blatant clickbait doesn't exactly dissuade that kind of attention. I remember feeling weird enough already during puberty, but the thought of my parents whipping out a video camera and detailing every single event that happened during that uncomfortable phase makes me want to gag. Maybe a medium would be right. Do you want to take those and, and try? What about me? No, not, not, you don't have to try them on here. You can find a dressing room. Okay. Mom. She's all embarrassed. So, did it work? <laughs> How come you're all embarrassed? Because you're filming her and you're her dad. <laughs> <There's> that... <laughs> I'll admit, some of their videos are a little more tame than others, but when it comes to titles that involve puberty or periods, it just comes off to me as a projection of your child's own insecurities to a much wider range of people for the aim of making money. And I think it's pretty hard to go about doing that in a tasteful manner. I've had to get after her a few times to wash her face 
and to remind her to take a bath or a shower, I'm gonna give her this. It's a little gold ring. It's kind of like the one Julie got for her birthday. And I'm just gonna tell her that when she wears it to remember that her body is a blessing and it's a good thing and everything that's happening to her is good and remember to take care of it. I just keep going back to the thought of having their friends at school being able to access all of this. And when I say friends, I mean it pretty loosely since it would seem they don't have any according to them. And now I have no friends. You can play with friends. No, like I don't have friends. I don't have friends either. I literally like told my friends I'm not hanging out with them anymore. Probably. I don't even know where they live. These kids have been pretty open with their mom about their lack of friends at school, which would honestly be crushing to any mother with a heart. But in the case of Ruby, it would seem that despite her apparently strict militaristic household, it's not hard to see where her priorities lie. Chad hasn't had a flip phone, a smartphone, any kind of phone, and it's been over a year. Mm -hmm. And um, I still have no intention of returning a phone. Abby, we took the phone away from Abby. Yo, what the fuck? I mean, yeah, no shit they don't have friends, dude. What the fuck are you doing? Yeah, it's not. this is like the least shocking development. Yeah, if you're a fucking teenager and you don't have a phone and you're, your mom is running the ship like a goddamn animal, okay? Uh, you're just, you know, your development is stunted. You're not going to, what are you going to talk to your, your peers about? At time, you had to do fucking push-ups, like... Be, um, November. In November. Oh, and and you, may, you may never get the phone back. Probably not. Um, if I was to go back and redo anything in parenting, it would be not to give the kids a phone. Yeah, so there will be basically no technology over the summer. Wait, I get it. You shoehorn enough of your miserable life into the spotlight that it's only natural for the more negative sides to show themselves. But openly denying your child the most basic necessity is a little bit more eldest daughter started documenting in a google doc everything she could remember with archive videos more than 30 seconds out of a 20 minute video as described by the eldest passenger on instagram i just got a text message uh from eve's teacher and she said that eve did not pack a lunch today and can i bring a lunch over to the school bonded and just said Eve is responsible for making her lunches in the morning, and she actually told me she did pack a lunch. Like, I'm sorry, but what did you really expect from a five-year-old girl? My mom is a kindergarten teacher, and I know for a fact those snot-nosed cretins cannot be expected to tie their own shoes, let alone remember to prepare an entire meal for themselves. Hopefully nobody gives her food and nobody steps in and gives her a lunch because then she- Oh, she put this out there, brother. She put this out there. She put this out there. Like, she published this. If anything, it's wild that, like, it's wild that it, it took, like, genuine, visible, physical abuse signs from a child who basically fucking escaped jail-like conditions for the law enforcement authorities to be like, yeah, this is, uh, you know, we should, we should touch on this. And it's kind of crazy because, like, this happens all the time. We've watched many stories uh, identical to this that don't document obviously this kind of child abuse and then like, like when cps shows up on their door they have very limited options and obviously like uh that structure in and of itself is not great either because then you're put in a fucking foster care which also sucks um like and then foster care can also be really damaging for the child but you know those turn to murder curses too yeah that's what i'm saying it's like uh, the, the, the family with like a bunch of, um, adopted black, like the, the lesbian couple with a bunch of like adopted black children come to mind. You guys remember? Fuck. What was it? They were like, they were like, uh, like Bernie Bernard sisters, I guess. And they were basically using, uh, their children as props and also routinely engaging in child abuse and like CPS showed up and. They can basically lie in that situation. Yeah, the Hart family. And then they drove them off of a cliff and killed everybody. Oh, yeah. Atlanta did an episode as well. She's not going to learn from the natural outcomes. What? You just trust that if your kid feels hungry enough by the end of the day, she'll learn how to pack her own food more diligently next time? You've got a little treat there. Some Nutella sticks. Why does she take the sandwich out and then put it in a container? Oh. Yeah, maybe because she's five. She doesn't know what to pick out because she's a child. If I had to pack my own lunch at that age, I'd be eating nothing but goldfish and gushers five days out of the week. My hope is that she'll be hungry and come home and go, oh man, that was really painful being hungry all day. I will make sure to always have a lunch with me. I know I'm not exactly experienced in this field, but I can never see myself doing that kind of thing. It's nuts, dude. She's five years old, lady. 
the fuck were you doing at five? You know what I mean? Like, she's literally unironically doing that meme. She's unironically doing that meme that I got where it's like, dumbass baby doesn't know how to make a sandwich meme that I engage in every now and then. Like, she's doing that. But seriously, she's like, wow, my dumbass child doesn't know how to make a fucking sandwich at the age of five. The parent. The definition of neglect in most states is the failure of a parent or caregiver to provide needed food shelter, clothing, medical care, or supervision to the degree that a child's health, safety, and well-being are threatened with harm. The first part of that definition should ring a couple bells. My job as a parent is to provide for the needs of my kids, the needs that they cannot meet themselves. You know, providing food, providing a safe place. Um, kids have a really hard time providing their own safe space. That is my responsibility. Ah! They're gonna think you're torturing him. Stop it. I know you're not, but it looks like you are. Okay, Russell. <laughs> I'm only gonna say it one more time and then you're gonna lose the privilege to eat dinner. Never mind the fact that her youngest daughter somehow slipped away and fell down a gutter or something. I, I don't know. I could barely find any information about this. <clears throat> one of the reasons I... Oh, no! What are you doing? You are so crazy, girl! Can you get me up here? I can't believe you're going down there. I can't get any of my kids to go down there. You did that all by... Oh also, the same kid that like broke a door. How do you let this happen, first of all? The boat kind of happened. What happened? I broke that. The, the, the shark came in. What happened? Evie, no, 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 no. Don't stand on that. Don't stand on this. The sharks. The sharks. The sharks. You pretending you're in the ocean and so you broke my door? Just think, if this is the type of thing unfolding on camera, it almost makes me wonder what all is happening off camera. You worry if dad and I are gonna get divorced? You do? I did not know you worried about that. How often do you worry about that? Um... Bro, why are you filming this, dog? What the fuck are you doing? Why are you filming this? Why is this being filmed? Weird as fuck. Mm, probably when I go to sleep. When you're mo the, at the most tired and then your mind starts going to extreme cases. Oh, well, do you hear dad and I yell and fight a lot? <laughs> You're supposed to say no. <laughs> You're not supposed to say yes. And there was a time, I'll find, a, I'll find the photo. I had just had Russell and Julie was just crying a lot and whiny. And, and one day I looked at her and I'm like, you just stink. She had like <laughs> peed her pants or something. And she, it was just because she was being neglected because I was totally paying attention to the new baby. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to, get somebody to help me with the little ones. I'm gonna pay attention to you. And so I bought her a new little dress at Walmart. It was like one of those dresses you see for like 4 dollars or whatever, a really cheap dress. It was just darling, cute as can be. And I gave her a bath and I brushed her hair and fixed it cute and she was good, she was better. Between policing her children's social media, suppressing their access to technology and failing to provide Food, it would seem Ruby's parenting methods are a bit unorthodox. You could say the ethical side of Ruby and Kevin were especially brought to the forefront when their eldest son, 14 at the time, had been shipped off to a wilderness camp in the middle of the desert, leaving many wondering what he could have done to warrant such a harsh and otherwise life-altering punishment. Oh, that is also... To... That also is the classic fucking classic uh wilderness uh shit that uh mormons love doing they love doing that who you guys in on what's been going on uh, a little bit with chad and why ruby and i are in a hotel room right now but first we have a sponsor did you know that j and j aubrey actually stands for ray j if you ask me his company okay this is our this is such an old ad from jobbery that we're skipping it because like uh there's no way that that link is still active on August 9th of 2019, Ruby you and mean her like you did? Yeah, no, what I did was nowhere near as bad. It was under the same. Didn't that happen to you? Yes. I was sent to a wilderness camp too, but it was like, oh, shit, the doors. Uh, uh, but it was not, it was on accident. Like it wasn't like, they didn't know it was like that. Hold on. Full husband Kevin emotionally relayed some pretty unfortunate news to their audience. <laughs> the guy says, oh, you don't need to bring anything except 36 pair of underwear. When Chad heard it, he was like, I really am going to go live in the desert in my underwear. Is the music necessary? Is it really necessary? I, I don't think it's. I don't think it's necessary. Chad today has just entered the Anasazi Foundation Wilderness Therapy Program, mm -hmm. where he's going to spend the next eight to ten weeks living in the um, 
Anasazi Desert. Yeah, in the desert mountains of Arizona. It became evident that some unspecified behavioral episodes had led the couple to their final decision of sending their 14-year-old son to live in the desert to be fixed, I guess. Where he would be stripped of all his basic commodities and forced to adopt a new minimalist, rugged way of living. The mindset here, of course, being that this change of pace would give him a new appreciation for the luxuries he has at home, assisting him along his spiritual journey with God. So the idea is with wilderness therapy is if you can survive with these peers in the wilderness with nothing more than the clothes on your back and a couple of field supplies, then there's nothing in this world that you can't tackle. And they said like, it's like the real wilderness out there. There's snakes, there's bears, there's coyotes, cougars. cougars. Like it's the real deal. We want Chad to have some of those experiences. I think close encounters would be good for him. Yeah, because those kinds of so this this is a uh, very common uh bray spelden also went on these as well i think he's like also documented his experiences in one of these camps for like being a i mean they do a lot of like ch this is basically child abuse masked as wilderness therapy the the one i went to wasn't like this obviously the one i went to was like pretty fucked up but it wasn't literally like uh it the one was like the one i went to was voluntary it wasn't like the the type of camp where they just like basically kidnap you and then drop you into this like insane situation. It wasn't like Synanon or anything. Mine was LNT. Um, oh, you're not. No, LNT means leave no trace. I forget. It's like Eagle Landing or something, which is a little bit different. Yeah, I mine was Outward Bound. It wasn't uh, Synanon. And this is like Outward Bound as well, I think. Of experiences can teach you what's really important. And he'll come home and he'll be like, dude. I survived and there were bears. I can do anything. I'm not scared at all about that kind of stuff. What I lose sleep over is when kids start self-sabotaging their own efforts. Yeah. That, that's the kind of stuff that really concerns me. Just to stick it to their teachers or to stick it to their parents or family. That And the only person they're really hurting is themselves. <sighs> Shut the fuck up. The Anasazi Foundation describes itself as a troubled teens wilderness organization specializing in restoring and strengthening parent-child relationships. Oh, and they're nonprofit, so they don't pay taxes either. Although they claim to be against behavioral modification on their website, I did find a glass door review from a former staff member who insisted Anasazi was more geared towards troubled teens by Mormon. There's a Mormon organization which I was not told being hired. They say they're non-denominational. Dude, Mormons do this shit all the time. Remember that anti-porn? anti-sex work chatter that came in here and was like see i'm not anti-sex work and look at this non-denominational website that has documented all the different kinds of like uh sex crimes that actually happen uh in reality during like uh ethical uh sex work that you claim and, and then we looked at it and immediately found out that it was a fucking mormon organization that disguised themselves as a non-denominational organization Cause like everybody knows if you fucking everybody knows if you if you just come out of the gates as like a christian organization or a mormon organization people are going to look at it differently so now they're like now they're more cunning in the way that they try to mask that messed up standards the anonymous trail worker went on to describe the heavily dense mormon staff as having minimal prior experience with kids let alone troubled ones vaguely alluding to the way certain campers were treated compared to others i understand it's hard to gauge the legitimacy of an anonymous review but the so-called therapeutic tab on their website hardly provides any insight to the specifics of their approach it seems to throw out a bunch of vague and definite terminology that applies to a generally holistic set of principles and although i don't know the specific issues their son is seemingly dealing with it just feels counterproductive to ship any child away to a camp so loose in its approach to treatment like what even are the essentials of a healthy lifestyle and how does teaching these basic things help somebody struggling with substance abuse it's like putting a band-aid on a bullet wound it's not exactly the type of information to give me peace of mind this is a, a chance for like a reset like a start over like a do-over like a fresh beginning yeah so look i can't really tell any parent how to raise their no you can't send your children to therapy because then they might become woke and gay. What you're supposed to do is send them to Mormon therapy, which is also bad. Because, like, a lot of these churches in these communities also have their own special therapists as well. And you don't want that shit either. Because, like, a lot, a lot of these, like, church groups will send you directly to a church-approved affiliated... Uh, church-approved affiliated... Uh, uh, a therapist and 
those people are not great either. Okay? Their kids. I don't have the expertise, so I'm not exactly in the know when it comes to the way their children behave, or at least I don't pretend to know as much as they do. But there is nothing, and I mean nothing, my kid could ever do that would make me think, huh, you know what would really help? Forcing them to sleep on the ground in the middle of the desert. Call me crazy, but that very concept sounds like it could worsen whatever it is they're already going through. Like, I'm sorry, Ruby, but in what universe would it be beneficial to pluck a troubled individual out of their element, in this case, seemingly against their own will, and throw them into an entirely new environment where they're forced to hold their own against new circumstances they've never been exposed to. I wouldn't know how to react. I'd feel betrayed. To me, it sends a message of, we don't want you here, which can only work to damage the trust necessary between a child and their parent. I'm not saying every experience with these camps has to be negative, but the dangerous potential of these decisions should not be overlooked either. And if you're from a family, and I know you are, you know that there are things that happen in your family that other people don't know about. And it's the same with our family. There are things that happen in our family you uh -oh. don't yeah, know about. We don't film, we don't share, so. So just trust us that we're doing what's- Bro, uh oh. It's like, yeah, extra abuse, you know what I mean? Remember, this video was made three years ago by Jobri. Friend of the show, Jobri made this video three years ago. This lady is now currently undergoing uh, a, a criminal proceedings. She's going to go to jail for aggravated child abuse best i'm really excited for chad again i don't know what's best for their family i don't claim to know everything that goes down behind closed doors in fact according to her son he had a great time granted he said this in front of his mother on camera along with this so me deciding that my stomach ache was chad's fault was not seeing things in truth but i really really want to blame him <laughs> because i just want to be able to eat my dessert and oreo cookies without Stomach aches and so on. send me off to another wilderness camp again. So <laughs> take that as you will. Chad, come do a QA. Where did you go? And I saw the And where is that? Arizona, Tosca National Forest. Okay, why did you go there? Because I was a bad boy. <laughs> what? I heard this huge buzz behind me. And I looked up and it was a tarantula hawk, which is like in the top five most painful insect stings scale. It's on that scale. Aren't they poisonous too? Fuck. Yeah. Like, that's why they're so painful, because they... Oh. And that landed on my forearm, and I, I started crying, and I was in the alone <laughs> in the woods. Although it was never really specified why he was sent to Anasazi in the first place, we know of some other behavioral complications that led to further punishment upon returning home. According to a deleted video on the Eight Passengers channel, the now 15-year-old got into some pretty hot water after a series of pranks on his younger brother. No, we never told our viewers. That I woke Russell up at 2 in the morning and told him that we're going to Disneyland and he has to pack, <laughs> and he got up and made his bed all neatly and then packed all his clothes in the suitcase. And then he walked out the door and I'm like, Russell, and he's like, what? And he's all happy. Has his sunglasses on. And I was like, we're not going to Disneyland. And he started crying and hitting me. And then he went back to bed in tears. And then... So that, that was... that was. Bro, see, this is... Dude, this is like the cycle of pedophilia. Pedophiles will go and do uh, child sex abuse. And then those people will end up also repeating that cycle in some instances. It's like YouTuber begets YouTuber, okay? Mother is a YouTuber. Creates a, a, a fucking YouTuber in the making. This dude is out here making YouTube videos without actually filming it at this point. Also, by the way, all jokes aside, that is 100%. Like, the, the dude is... That wasn't valid to fucking send him to abuse camp, okay? Like, that's just like a funny little story. <laughs> Not the reason you lost your room, but that was... Well, the other reason is because I pointed a BB gun at his face. Pointed a BB gun at his face and hung him on the basketball. <laughs> <laughs> Typical, if you ask me. I think all siblings are going to pick on each other at one point or another. That's just how siblings are. The pranks me and my sister used to play on each other growing up make some of these look pretty tame by comparison. And in my opinion, lying to your brother about a Disneyland trip and letting him hang from a basketball hoop is entirely less cruel than what Ruby saw fit for punishment. My bedroom was taken away for seven months and then you gave it back like a couple weeks ago. I don't think our viewers know that. You're sleeping on a beanbag. I'm sleeping on a beanbag. She's like, that's paywalled content, dumbass. He's like, dude, why are you leaking? that that's fucking paywall child abuse you're not supposed to leak that part of the child abuse our viewers didn't pay for the privilege that is supposed to be kept to the patreon <laughs> they gave my room back like two weeks ago chad showed that he was not able to manage himself okay you know what's wild though she posted that she literally like she could have cut that out she posted it instead you know what i mean what are you doing sharing a bedroom with russell so when we moved um 
the bigger room in the basement was automatically his and I didn't have a room. It was only revealed in this video from 2020 that the eldest son had been sleeping without a bed since October. For over half a year of his life, this child was forced to sleep on a beanbag chair because he pulled a few distasteful pranks on a sibling. He's 15. I understand when harsher forms of punishment- That's the thing I don't get. Someone in the chat also said this, like, who the fuck watches this shit? That's the part I don't understand at all. Why is this compelling content? Why is this entertaining? Why are people watching this shit? I don't get it. I genuinely don't get it. It can't be other kids. I don't think it's other kids. It's other moms, sure. Kids watch it. Kids are watching like, like a horror story. If I'm a kid, if I'm a kid and I'm watching this, it's like, it's like watching a scary movie, dude. It's like, oh my God, imagine how fucked up my mom would be like if she was like this. Men are sometimes justified, but I don't know when it would ever be appropriate to take away your child's own bedroom. So a lot of you are like, hey, that's not fair because Chad got the bigger, the lesser bedroom and Russell got the, the bigger bedroom. bedroom. <laughs> Russell got the big bedroom and Chad got the, the smaller bedroom smaller. and Russell's bigger bedroom also had a bathroom. But what you guys didn't know was <laughs> Chad didn't get any room. Mm -hmm. He didn't, he didn't get anything. He was sleeping on the floor in the family room. Not only is there an ethical issue with this, but think about all the physical side effects that could come from sleeping in a beanbag chair for that long. You're just asking for back pain, spinal issues. And this was right after he got home from that stupid wilderness camp too. So not only did the camp evidently not work, but I guess they figured he didn't need a comfortable place to sleep anymore. Just look at the way Ruby's face changes as soon as he brings it up. It feels like we're not even supposed to know about this. Can't imagine why, of course. She only kept it under wraps for about seven months. Maybe I'm a little too soft though, right? Maybe I'm insane, I don't know. But to me, you shouldn't be punishing your child so ruthlessly after their trip to a correctional camp. You should probably be rewarding them after such a daunting and distressing experience, but yeah, that, that's just me. Gonna start abusing Murat to see if the audience grows. Gonna start abusing Murat to see if the audience grows. Brother, Murat is a 30 year old man. Like, Murat's not a baby. Even if I were to fucking abuse him, okay, on camera, it's like, you understand that there's a difference, right? Between doing that to your babies versus like, to a fucking grown ass adult man who is probably older than most people in this chat. Me. Maybe I really want my kids to turn out as snowflakes. I don't know. We need to face challenges. We need to face hardship Resilient. and pain to develop resilience and grit. And that's what leads to success in life. If we make things easy on our kids all the time, they're going to grow up to be snowflakes. Yeah. And the things that we show and share and the things that many of you are criticizing and calling abusive are actually things that mental health professionals have. Bro, he's felt though. Like, the dad is kind of yoked, dude. What's going on? I mean, he's such a weird-looking guy, but he is a bit buff. I'm just going to fucking point to that a little bit. He's got gyno. Man, everybody's got gyno. Uh, counseled us to do. The most worrisome characteristic I find with parents in these situations is that they don't seem to have insight. They don't seem to be aware of how they could be causing harm. We see a lot of defensiveness. For example, in a video that Ruby put on Instagram, she said if people were looking at her parenting and being critical, those people might be projecting. Ruby. I mean, you verbally abuse your fam on camera daily anyway. There ain't no fucking way. 14 month subscriber. What? Dude, British. British people just out of control. As a dude with gyno, it's actually really cathartic to hear you say that. It's a huge source of body dysmorphia for me. I got a little bit of gyno too. Don't worry about it. Everybody's got gyno. You literally abused your mom on cam last week by rubbing it in her face that you were gaming with T-Pain and she wasn't. Yeah, I was flexing. I was like, mom, I hate to do this to you, but I'm flexing on him. Kevin have a unique way of deflecting any criticism back onto their critics, becoming overly defensive anytime their own parenting skills are brought into question. And although I can kind of understand their frustration, I think it's completely within reason to examine whatever people decide to publicize online. In the case of these channels, they're explicitly picking and choosing what parts of their life to showcase. And assuming these clips reflect reality, it's only natural for uproar to ensue. Um, I want to go to the grocery store and I want to make dinner tonight. I could go into denigration and say, I'm not a good mom, or I'm not as good as other moms because other moms don't make their kids fend for themselves three nights in a row, which would be comparison. And I don't know that. Maybe other moms do. Like oh my God. She was so close to the truth, it seems. Like right there. No, no, no. You were close to the fucking truth, lady. You were close. You know? Yeah, true. So close. Like, I don't know what they do in their homes. Um, but what I do know is that I 
am unchanging and I can- The dad also said he had no idea this was happening. He also hasn't gotten custody back. DCFS currently has custody of the four children who are under 18. I don't know if the dad, he didn't know what the fuck was going on. We just watched him also defend the practices. Of the I can choose any day now to go- It feels like watching a conservative conspiracy theorist almost gain class consciousness. I mean, true. Also, she is a conspiracy, I mean, a conservative conspiracy theorist as well. Buy more groceries and make a more decent meal. Um, and I can feel centered instead of feeling shameful. But their parenting is just one piece of the pie. You also have to consider the pros and cons of recording certain events to begin with. For example, it's one thing to discipline your kid in private, but it's another to do it with a camera shoved in their face only to be monetized. What? Why did you? Why did you open this? I didn't eat it. Eve! She buys everything. Go put this in my room. Where is she? Maybe you are not supposed to open your packages. Is that mine? You know the rule. We're not supposed to open packages that are on the porch. Only mommy does that. You have a birthday coming up and now you sell your present. Sorry, mom. Kids can't exactly consent to this kind of coverage. And if it doesn't have enough of an effect on their lives now, think about how all of these clips could potentially be used against them in the future. There's no privacy. Some have likened it to living in a transparent house. But I think it's actually worse than that. If their house was actually transparent, then people would have to drive by to see in. That would essentially be a passive loss of privacy. But by recording everything and putting it on YouTube, they're engaging in an active destruction of privacy. But like I said, I'm hardly the first person to take issue with any of this. In fact, one of my friends, Ready to Glare, actually made her own video on this incredible family, along with another creator by the name of Sloan. I'd love to provide clips of their videos in this one, but I'm afraid I can't do that, as both of their videos have been taken down at the will of, you guessed it, Ruby Frank herself. No fucking shot. Bro, oh my God, she also, no fucking shot. R.I.P. Vod. no, no, uh, good luck to her. First of all, this video has been up since 2020. And also, secondly, good luck to her fucking sending a DMCA claim from prison, dog. It would seem that despite the cruel and unusual punishments so frequently enacted upon She's her own in jail, kids, homie. Ruby remains <laughs> physically unable to take criticism herself. You'd think that a mother who has written an entire book on parenting would be more secure in her methods than to silence those for speaking out against her actions. But Ruby likes to keep you guessing. You never know what her next move is going to be. In the case of these channels, that move was to issue a cease and desist. But when you have clips like these circulating around, I can't exactly say I blame her for wanting them gone. What I did was I went around the house. And I have one more way. Yes. That's my homework. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, homework. I need that to turn that in tomorrow. Kiss. No, I'm serious. That's like half my grade right now. If you have something in the bag that you would like out, you can pay cash for it. So you learn the value of your items. Family vlogging is still new, so we don't know. Hey guys, sorry, uh, teacher. I know you're not going to believe me on this, but fucking hear me out. Okay, no, the dog did not eat my homework. Hear me out, teach. No, my mom did. What? No, I'm telling you, my mom ate my fucking homework, teacher. Oh, you don't believe me? Guess what? Wait next, wait until next week. Wait until next week when my dumbass mom uploads this fucking content <laughs> onto her fucking YouTube the full impact such a lifestyle could have on a developing mind, making it one of the more shameless and potentially risky genres on all of YouTube. If a parent wanted to make their own channel documenting their personal journey of raising a child, sharing advice without said child being involved in the making of those videos, I don't see a problem at all. But when you begin to incorporate children as young as five and six into your content, they become directly associated with your brand. The kids are literally the selling points of these vlogs and filming every minuscule moment of your child's life since the day they- I think the wildest part about this, and I'm seeing some chatters also point to it, is that she didn't actually homeschool her kids at least up at this point up until this point it's like i don't know if it's like mormon school that she's sending her children to in utah so like she can get away with doing this shit but it's wild that like she didn't even try to fucking uh hide them from the authorities this way
They burst out of the womb not only puts their own privacy at risk, but could potentially harm their perception of the world as they get older. We've already seen the catastrophic effects fame can have on child stars in Hollywood, so just imagine what that kind of attention could do when you don't even get a break from it in your own home. I imagine having a camera shoved in your face must stifle certain experiences in your life, and for some of these kids, it's literally all they've come to know. And to add insult to injury, child endangerment laws used to protect those in Hollywood from being exploited are not applied to social media on a a wider scale, inviting any given parent to just flaunt their child with little to no regulation, begging the question of how far is too far. To me, Ruby Frank is just one of the many parents on YouTube who freely exploit the lives of their loved ones without even a second thought, her husband directly enabling this vicious cycle by refusing to step in and do anything. Certain channels will happily jeopardize the privacy of their children if it means they can turn a profit and make themselves superstars in the meantime. To me, the blatant stripping of privacy against their child's own will greatly outweighs whatever entertainment value the 8 Passengers channel may carry, underlining the inhumane conditions that come along with exploiting an entire family. <laughs> um, banger beat, banger video from Jabri, who, whose information led to the subsequent arrest of Ruby Frank and Jody, Jody Hildebrandt. That's right, the initial appearance uh, hearing in Southern Utah is happening today. And uh, there's a major issue with the amount of people trying to join the WebEx. Meanwhile, it appears that Ruby was moved from a holding cell to the medical block in the Washington County Jail. Our local news media pool camera is in the courtroom. Court order per Utah State Court says there's no live streaming permitted. Ruby Frank has been ordered to be held without bail. Her next hearing will be on September 21st, and Jody Hildebrand's next hearing will also be on September 21st. The judge asked Ruby Frank if she could hear him. She said yes. Same goes for Jody. Uh, Jody Hildebrand's attorney filed a motion to the court asking for an expedited detention hearing, citing the defendant has experienced a life threatening medical issue resulting in her hospitalization for several days. Why just the moms? Because I think the dad wasn't as hands-on with the abuse as the moms were it seems at least according to the eyes of the law attorneys for frank and hildebrandt declined our request for comment but frankie's sister spoke out on social media saying that they have kept quiet on this for the sake of the children but help them behind the scenes adding that ruby's around oh dad isn't even in the same state they've been separated for 13 months oh that makes sense Rest needed to happen. And you can see there's been a lot of controversy and questions for quite some time now. That it makes it even more bizarre to say the sisters are saying the this sister. needed to happen. Mm -hmm. yeah. So why didn't they speak up sooner? Ooh. And where was the husband? I'd yeah, like to know what's his take. It, if, if it was billed on, I'd never heard of this woman, to be honest with you, mm -hmm. until we were doing the story. It's called Eight Passengers, mm -hmm. based on their life. Where is he? Uh, there's a so lot of talk upsetting. about his role in all this, especially in the past year or so. And mm -hmm. so there are plenty of, uh, a lot of issues to be talked about. To be continued. Yeah. Thank you, Nancy. All right.